We've all got a cruel streak in our character. Sadistic, even, if you ask me. It seems to be part of our nature as human beings, or animals, I guess. Um, just how strong is that desire, that will, that need, I guess, to either control other people or harm them and exert ourselves upon them by making them suffer. How strong is that desire? <clears throat> we, as a society, we've more or less turned our backs on the idea of physically making other people suffer. We seem to think that that's bad. We have this built-in sort of non-aggression principle in our society. Um, leave other people alone. Who started it? Uh, that kind of thing. <clears throat> well, that's not the only way that you can make someone suffer. Overtly, physically, or even you know, psychologically, i.e. telling stories about them, insulting them, etc. Guilt is one way in which we can make people suffer, and we can justify our sadistic impulses. If you deliberately inflict guilt upon someone, you're deliberately making them suffer. If you're deliberately engineering a sense of pain, internal pain, internal suffering on someone, then you may as well be just turning a screw uh, on a pair of thumb screws. You might, might as well just be deliberately tightening that pair of thumb screws to make them howl in pain. The whole point of deliberately guilting somebody is to make them suffer. <clears throat> you might say that you're making them suffer in order to achieve a certain result. But the actual experience of guilt is profoundly negative. When you feel guilt yourself, it's essentially... Uh, it's a sense of being at war with oneself, of violent self-hatred, um, overwhelming, debilitating, crippling. And people who suffer from guilt <clears throat> uh, often do have that sort of momentary <gasps> where this sense of almost physical pain overwhelms them. It becomes simply impossible, this sort of tidal wave of guilt that just often comes out of nowhere, just pops into the head, and you think about just how awful a human being you are. Um, and you sort of revel in your own suffering. You know, the usual guilt spiral stuff where it just feeds off itself and gets worse and doesn't go anywhere. <clears throat> guilt is violence. The deliberate application of guilt is an act of violence. It's an act of aggression. I originally characterized the people that surround in Mendham um, as members of a death cult, which I don't in hindsight think that that was fair. What I do believe it is, it's uh, a cult of guilt and shame. Um, and it's a serious one. Because once you decide that <clears throat> if anyone feels guilty, that means that there is something to feel guilty about. Um, anyone who's studied guilt knows that no, it's not necessarily <clears throat> the case that if you do feel guilty, you're automatically feeling guilty about something that you should feel guilty about. Kirk apparently has departed this existence. Um, it's a pity. I liked him, even though uh, we were sort of friendly enemies, opposite sides of the, uh, the discussion on one that was overtly about antinatalism, but I don't think that that's really what it's about, if you ask me. It's, again, it's guilt and shame. <clears throat> Kirk dealt in guilt and shame, or it looked as it looked like he did, based on the things that he'd said to me, saying that I was a monster. He would say this to other people, um, that my motives are suspect. He would say this to other people, um, that... 
essentially anybody who <clears throat> didn't share his views on things was justifiably to be painted as a bad person. Um, in other words, I formed the opinion, rightly or wrongly, and I still adhere to this opinion, that derived energy, a.k.a. Kirk, dealt in guilt. Um, I mentioned in a previous video that it's entirely possible that in the scene in the movie The Heat of the Night, when Sidney Poitier was slapped across the face by the southern racist, that he was hoping to get slapped across the face so he could slap the racist back in, a, in an act that would be a hundred times more significant than himself being slapped. The dynamics of situations like this are never simple, and that's what makes them so fascinating. I feel sorry for Kirk. Anybody that went through what he went through, yes, of course, that's terrible. But I don't feel guilty. It's entirely possible that in his last moments, an uncharitable thought or two went through his mind. I hope this really gets my parents or some people who have wronged me in the past profoundly. I hope that my suicide really fucks them up. I'm not saying that that did happen. I don't know Kirk well enough to know if he was capable of that kind of thing. And I apologize to whatever memory he has left us um, if I've wronged him by even thinking this way. However, I think it's possible. I think that in the dynamics of guilt, the urge to make other people suffer and feel guilt is so strong that we will often consciously um, bring enormous suffering onto ourselves in order for that to be used, in order for that to strengthen our hand in our ability to manipulate other people through guilt and make them ashamed um, and in a state of conflict with themselves. Um, passive aggression is a gigantic thing with endless tentacles coming out from it. It's a fascinating way in which we can non-physically and even, I guess, in a sense, non-verbally damage maim or even kill each other. Guilt is quite literally that bad. Anyone who's ever read novels by Franz Kafka or um, has ever even seen a Woody Allen movie or watched a Seinfeld episode um, will know just how ferocious a thing guilt can be. And anyone who's ever exerted in their life any sort of passive-aggressive tendencies, guilty as charged, will know that firing a guilt bolt at somebody deliberately is profoundly satisfying to a certain part of our character. You get an enormous feeling of power when you're able to do that. You've struck someone in a very vulnerable place where they cannot defend themselves and they can't hit back. Um, guilt can be used aggressively and in my interactions with the people who I suppose call themselves ephilists, um, guilt has often been the weapon of choice. Um, I hope Kirk rests in peace wherever he is, but I have no illusions about the living. He was once a living, flawed human being, with all the temptations and all the unfortunate and, we, we could even say, shameful attributes that humans have. He was once tempted by 
the desire to guilt, the desire to have power, the desire to harm, just as all of us are now who are still alive. Mourn the dead by all means. The dead, however, have no right to act in a violent way upon the living. They're beyond harm. Even the Ephelist philosophy says that they can no longer be harmed. Why should we allow them to harm us? <laughs> 